In this video, we're going to look at the basics of how to work with projects in MeisterTask. Note that I'm going to skip the first few steps of how to create projects, sections, and tasks because those were already covered in our Getting Started with MeisterTask video. So if you don't know how to do these things yet, have a look at that intro video first. To get started, I want to talk about sections. The sections in your project are meant to reflect your team's workflow and show you, at a glance, which stage a task is currently in. Right now, we're looking at a project created by a software company's design team. New tasks are always added in the Open section on the left, and then move through the different stages of Up Next, In Progress, In Review, and Done, where they're marked as completed. With five sections in total, it's easy to view the whole project at once. If you look more closely at the task tiles, you can see that each one has a colorful tag, Tags are a way to categorize your tasks and help you answer questions such as, how many tasks of a certain type do we currently have in the pipeline? To make that answer even clearer, you can use project filters. To access filters, click on the little icon displayed above your project members. This opens the sidebar, where you can switch back and forth between the project's activity stream and the project filters. Clicking on a tag here will instantly hide all tasks that don't contain this particular tag. Of course, you can filter for all kinds of things, such as task assignees, due dates, or tasks that contain a certain keyword in the title. To display all tasks again, you can either hit Reset or simply close the sidebar. Let's take a look at a few different kinds of projects to better understand the concept of sections and tags. This project is used by a sales team and works like a simple CRM. Each task represents a lead, which is added into the section on the left, and then moved through the stages of assessment, solution development, and negotiation until they're either marked as won or lost. Tags are used to indicate how hot a lead is, and therefore are called A lead, B lead, and C lead. This project is used by an agile development team for their software sprints. At the beginning of the sprint, tasks are moved from the team's backlog, which is managed in a separate project, into the backlog section of this sprint project. Additionally, tickets from users are inserted into the ticket section. Tasks are then moved into the in-progress section while they're being worked on, and then moved into review, testing, ready for deploy, and finally deployed when the update is live. In this scenario, tags are used to indicate whether a task is related to a ticket from a user, a bug that was noticed by somebody within the team, a feature enhancement, or something that improves the code's health and or performance of the software. Our last example shows a project that doesn't follow the typical Kanban workflow. As opposed to the software sprint we saw before, this project isn't ongoing. Instead, it was created for the sole purpose of updating a company blog. Each section stands for a task. This means the tasks are not moved from one section to the next, they are created in one particular section and remain there until they're completed and or archived. Tags are merely used to indicate the priority of each task, so the project members know which ones to focus on first. Now that we have a good idea of how to use sections, tags, and filters, let's take a quick look into project properties to go over some more basic functionality. In this dialog, you can select an avatar for your project from MeisterTasks library or upload your own icon from your hard drive. You can also change the project's name, add a description, and click on this I button here to watch the whole project. Being a watcher of the whole project means that you will get notified about all changes made in the project as if you had added yourself as a watcher on each individual task. If you need to keep a very close eye on your project's progress, this can be a good way to go. Lastly, clicking on the three dots opens another submenu, which brings you to the options of duplicating, archiving, printing, 
and exporting the project. Imagine you've set up the perfect project with the right kinds of sections, tags, maybe even predefined checklists and automations, and now you want to have a second project with the same setup. Instead of recreating everything from scratch, you can simply duplicate your first project and then decide exactly what you want to copy over into the new project. When you've completed a project or simply don't need it anymore, you can archive it. This will remove it from your list of active projects, but you can still find it in your archived projects. From here, you can either restore it or delete it permanently. Thank you.